So in the first two music theory lessons I did, I just covered the root note and then what the power chord, major, minor, sus2, sus4 chords were. After that, I think um, it's possible to start really understanding how all this stuff works. So as I mentioned in the other videos, especially the first one, the, ma the major scale is the most important concept by far because all music theory is based on the major scale. So there's one pattern in particular that I recommend people learn and you can move it around anywhere. Um, so what you want to do is, uh, first I'm just going to draw some circles for the pattern. So you're going to put your middle finger right here. You can do this anywhere on the guitar, just pick a fret. It needs to be probably above the fifth fret though. So right here, this could be anywhere. I like to do it. I would recommend doing it on like the seventh fret. It's a nice spot to do it. So put your middle finger on the seventh fret. And then you need to put your pinky right there. So you're going to play up these notes. So middle finger on that first note. And actually, just because this is so important, right here, this needs to be middle finger. It's really important to use your middle finger. You'll find later because then you can start um, adding notes to the left and the right. So you put your middle finger there, let's say on the seventh fret. And then you're gonna put your pinky, so that would be over on the ninth fret. Then you go up to the sixth fret. You play that one with your first finger, then your middle finger, so you don't have to hold any notes down. So this is sixth fret. And then pinky on nine, so you're playing up these notes. Then your first finger is going to go on six, right here. And then your ring finger is going to go right here on the eighth fret. So ignore those double dots that just pretend that this is six, seven, eight, nine. Then your pinky is going to go right there. And then your first finger. So we're just climbing up. This is a major scale, but first I'm just doing the dots. Then your third finger. And then your pinky. And then your middle finger. And then your pinky. And then your first finger. Middle finger. And pinky. So there's actually guitar books that look like this. This is a major scale. And remember, it's real important. I'm drawing this red arrow. That should be your middle finger. It's like really essential when you're playing a scale to do that. Because then you can use all those other fingers and just climb up. So that's a major scale. But that's like really hard to remember. That's just a bunch of dots. And like when I first started learning guitar, I would learn major scale like that. And that's okay. I mean, whatever you need to do. But um, when it starts to make more sense is when you start to understand that there's that there's seven notes. There's seven notes in a major scale, and you start to visualize these numbers. So here's the first note. We call that the one. Then the second note. There's the two. So already it starts to just make more sense. Three. There's the third note. And the four. And then the five. So we're climbing up the major scale. And these are the numbers of the major scale. There's the six note of the major scale, seven. And now when we get to the next note, it's a repeat. So we don't go to eight, we go back to one. And so if you play guitar for any number of times, you might notice that's an octave. And that's because the two ones, the two root notes of this scale are the same. Then we go to the two. So we're just climbing up in the next octave of the same major scale. Then the three. Then the four. Then the five. Six. Seven. And the one. And the two. So I think this is the best major scale to learn when you're first starting guitar, 
And it's also the most useful later for doing chord construction, like when you're just trying to make up chords. Um, this is one of the patterns. There's one other one that's equally useful that maybe I'll cover later, but um, in a different video. But this one's nice because it uses all the strings, and I definitely recommend memorizing this. So there's a major scale. Then the next question is, well, how does this relate to just the concepts of like a major chord and a minor chord, um, or a sus chord? So if you remember a major chord, um, a major chord equals one, three, five. That's its definition. One, three, five. So that's what a major chord is. Then if you want to play a major chord, all you need to do is find one threes and fives. But there's one rule that's kind of important, is that the lowest note um, needs to be the one. Like, eventually when you really know what you're doing, it, you can not always do that. But for right now, you need to include this. That's probably why I was stressing using your middle finger. So if you put your middle finger on that, that's going to be like the base note of the chord. And it's important that that is the one, because let's say we use the three instead, this little three right here, as the lowest note, then something can start to happen where it starts to sound like a new chord. It's kind of like we're just shifting the center of gravity of the chord, and it could start to sound sometimes like a minor chord. So for now, you really got to have your middle finger on the one, and then all you have to do is start finding one, threes, and fives in some order. So like, a good order to try first is to, so you're holding on that one with your middle finger, then you use your first finger on the three here, which would be the sixth fret. That would be your first finger, and then you use your ring finger on seventh fret on the B string. This is a really cool shape. If you played for a little while, you might notice it looks like a G chord, but you can actually move this around, because right now we're on seventh fret. Um, so this is a cool shape, and you can actually like move a G chord around. You just have to be careful not to hit those two strings, but if you know how to finger pick, then you can do that. Um, another really, really useful shape that I use all the time is instead of using that three, instead of using this one, you could use the, the other one right here and play this little three note chord. And this one sounds really nice. I use this one the most. So I don't really like Personally, I don't really like bar chords unless I'm just doing like background rhythm stuff. So if you want to make more melodic sounding music, a lot of guitar players like to play either just the one three here, just the one and the three. And that sounds nice because you can actually exclude the five. Like one more side note is that the note that people drop out, like the full definition of a major chord is one, three, five. But people oftentimes will drop the five out. Because actually the most important note to give it its quality is the three. Um, but the one, like, always has to be to be there. But the five actually isn't all that important. Like, it sounds good, but you can get rid of it a lot of times. So a lot of times people will just play this one three right here. Or just this one three down here. But I like this shape with, with this five also. The one three five. A lot of times I'll play like the one three and then go to the five and add that in. Or you can actually do this four note shape is pretty cool. Um, I like to do that one and then you can toggle like other notes. Like you could add the six or the two occasionally or the seven, but kind of this like, this diamond shape right here is super useful to know about. So let's say you wanted to suss this chord out. Well, if you remember from the other video I put up about these definitions, a sus chord is um, just, uh, let's say we wanted to make a sus four, because that's a common thing to do from a major chord. Then what you would do is have to change the three to a four. You can't have the three anymore. You actually would have to get rid of it. So in this picture, we can't have this. So we're going to get rid of our threes. We have to make it into a four. So we could use this four right here. Um, 
So what people like to do is just slide that three over and suss it out, make a sus four for a second. Because a sus chord is sort of like um, a tension chord, and then you go back to the major chord. And the other option would have been to, to get rid of the threes, like we did, get rid of those threes, but then use the two instead. And sus two chords, um, so let's say we get rid of the four now, so we're done with the sus four. So sus two chords, you could have the one, two, five there, that's a nice chord. You could have this one, two, five for sus two. Sus two chords are like a little different than sus four, because sus two, you could actually make a whole song with sus two chords, and people would think it sounded nice, whereas if you made a whole song with sus four chords, it would kind of make people uncomfortable because it's tension chord. Um, and also sus four is used more for rock, whereas sus two can be used for like mellow stuff. And I would tell my students it's the yoga chord, because if I were to have to go play music at a, like a yoga studio, I would break out a bunch of sus two chords. Um, John Mayer likes to use sus two chords and like U2, like Coldplay. So that kind of like mellower sort of sound. So that would be a sus two. And then one last little point, um, a power chord. I talked about that a little bit in the other video. Power chord is just one five. So it's only two notes. That's the definition, one five. And so what's kind of like, here's what everybody knows for a power chord. Here's the one, then the one fives. So like, Sometimes people will play their power chord just with two notes, just those two notes. But more often people will play with those three notes and slide that around. But what's kind of weird is like, this technically is a power chord. Sometimes I joke around with my students, I'll play power chords like that one five right there. It just, I mean, this one actually would sound okay if you did that one five. This w would not sound like a power chord. It would sound pretty weird. Technically, that is a power chord, and sometimes, like, you'll see in books, it'll say, like, G5, but the chord doesn't look at all like a power chord. That's because the person who's, who's doing it is just being technical. Um, and really, like, saying it's a five chord kind of makes more sense than saying it's a power chord. Like, it is a five chord, because it's just the one five. And actually, a lot of times, if someone's playing a G major chord, with the with like the three on the B string instead of the. A lot of times people when they play when they play a G major chord, they'll add like a D or the five, which I showed in the in the first video of this music theory stuff. They'll add a D on the B string, and they'll have no B. They'll have no three, in the chord. It actually kind of does sound like a power chord, and like Nirvana. One final thing, Nirvana, when they did like um, their acoustic set for the New York Unplugged thing, because um, I remember I used to have that book, and I thought it was interesting because a lot of their songs are all power chords. So when they played their acoustic set, a lot of times they would use power chord shapes for the open shapes and always exclude the, the three from the major. Or the minor chords, I mean, really, you can't tell the difference, but um, it was kind of interesting because their songs would sound a little weird if all of a sudden they started adding in all these major and minor sounds instead of doing their more power chord sounds. Because a lot of times his vocal melodies just wouldn't really sound right the way he would sing stuff if it was all of a sudden like really folky and major sounding. So, anyways, this kind of turned it into a mess, but it's kind of good to see how all this stuff kind of interrelates because learning music theory isn't really just learning one thing it's kind of this whole system of knowledge but the first key is just to learn this major scale maybe i'll put up like a video of playing this scale and doing it on the guitar it'll probably help to see how all this stuff works so that's it